Hey guys, it's Chris here in our shop, and today I'm very excited to be announcing and unveiling our new Long Mill Magnetic Dust Shoe. We've had this new dust shoe in design for many months now, and the reason I'm really excited about it is because of it not only maintains the benefits that a Z-axis independent dust shoe brings, but we found a way to make it more easily adjustable uh, while keeping a very simple design. You're able to now uh, see in through the front in order to get a full view of your cutting. And this is very advantageous for people who are learning to use their CNC. And it has a magnetic attachment. This is very important because you're now able to remove the dust shoe easily if you would like to use our probe, for example, in order to probe your material and then replace the dust shoe and go back to cutting. Uh, it's also very, very handy for doing a tool change as well. Of course, we've also made a couple tweaks here and there to further improve the rigidity and the reliability of the shoe, as well as maintain its effectiveness in picking up dust. So I'm going to bring you in close now because I want to show you what's going to arrive in the box when you receive your new long mill magnetic dust shoe, um, how it's going to be assembled into the completed assembly you can see here, and how you're going to go about mounting it to your CNC machine. The other thing I want to mention is that the way that this uh, new dust shoe has been designed it is still fully backwards compatible with all previous versions of the long mill. The only caveat is that you either need to drill one or two holes into your gantry, but I'll show you later on that this is quite straightforward and it should be an easy installation for anyone as long as you have the drill bits available to you. One thing I'll mention before I open the box is obviously this dust shoe has magnets in it, so you want to be cautious when handling them. They're quite strong magnets, um, so obviously take the necessary precautions you normally take around strong magnets. So you can see what we get inside the box is uh, the bristle ring, which uh, already has the bristles pre-installed. We've got the main hose mount here. Uh, which you can see on the back side here, it's got the magnets pre-installed. We've got the acrylic base plate. The galvanized steel mounting plate. And our small baggie of hardware. And included are two of the windows that go in the front and we include a second one uh, as a backup in case you have any crazy mishap and manage to break the first so that that's there for you as well. So I've got all my parts laid out here and what you're going to need for assembly is a metric set of allen keys, uh, a 2.5 size, a 3 size and a 4 size. These are used for M3, 4, and 5 bolts respectively. Um, if you've got your uh, long mill dedicated maintenance wrench, you can use this to attach the nuts. Uh, when we go to attach the bracket onto the X gantry, and I've also brought along uh, two drill bits for later installing the, the um, bracket as well. So the drill bit that you're mainly interested in is either a 5.5 millimeter or a 13 64ths inch uh, drill bit. You can also use a 7 32nd inch drill bit as well. And I'll show you why later on. And then just uh, any smaller drill bit that you might have laying around. These both need to be capable of cutting through 
the steel in the gantry. So the process of putting this together is quite straightforward. It's, it's actually uh, easier than with the previous dust shoe design. The first step is just going to be to remove the plastic film off of the acrylic. There we go. And so we're going to be taking the mount here and the mount has uh, three spots where uh, the long M4 bolts go through. So um, basically it goes, uh, the first two bolts will be going through here, uh, through the top, through these two holes um, in the acrylic, these two here. And then also through these two holes in the bristle ring. And the bolts will come out the back side here where there's a hexagonal cutout in the printed part to hold the nuts in place. So I'll just show you what that looks like. So I've got two of the M4 bolts and two of the M4 nuts. I'm going to take the bolts and I'm going to put them through here and here. Then I'm going to put the acrylic through those holes as well. And you'll see that the, the acrylic lines up with the profile of the 3D printed part. And then I'm going to put the bristle ring on as well, like this. And you can see the profiles of all of them line up. And then I'm going to stick the nut on, grab my uh, three-sized Allen key for the M4. And you kind of want to uh, hold all of this in place and screwed in from the other side, at least until the nut has caught into the plastic. And now the nut should hold itself in place while you keep tightening the bolt from the other side. So you can see here. Now it's nice and tight. And I'll do that on the other side as well. These are nylon lock nuts, so they're going to be hard to tighten down, but once you do, this dust shoe is not going to come back apart. All right, the last M4 bolt is actually going to come in from the bottom here and attach to the nut, which is going to fasten into this side slot here. So basically you just are going to take the last M4 nut and drop it into this slot here and then use uh, an Allen key just to push it the rest of the way in. And that'll snap deep into there. And then you can grab your last M4 bolt and drop it in from the bottom here. And grab your three size Allen key and tighten down on this. There we go. The last point that the bristle ring attaches to the acrylic is at this mounting point here. 
And so for that, you're gonna be grabbing one of the M3 bolts and one of the M3 nuts. So M3 bolt just comes in from behind here. In through the hole there. And then the M3 nut gets captured from above. And you use your size 2.5 Allen key in order to attach that in place. Just like that. Next I'm gonna attach the viewing window onto the front. So you just grab your window here and this also has a plastic film on it that you'll want to remove on both sides. There we go. And this is gonna use uh, the other two of the M3 bolts. Uh, there's an extra one here, just in case you misplace one. And the other two M3 nuts. And once again, there's an extra one there, as well as an extra M4 nut. And essentially, what you're gonna be doing is you're just going to be placing the bolts into this front part here, into the plastic and from the back side, uh, this is where the window attaches into place. You can see how it fits into the bolts coming out the back there, and then that's where you attach your M3 nuts. So, I don't have an M3 size wrench on me, so I've just got these pliers to hold on to the M3 nuts from the back side while I tighten it down. The M3 nuts don't need a whole lot of force to hold them in place, so you can just use a small pair of needle nose or something like that, and that'll do fine. We're at the last step now. If you had an existing dust shoe installed, then this back bracket area here is still going to be attached to the X gantry on your machine. And so if that's the case, then you should first uninstall that. So I'm gonna do that really quickly on this machine here. Now there were uh, two different versions of the original long mill dust shoe that uh, came with the machines. They differentiated in terms of how the rear bracket looked. Um, for one of the rear brackets, we were using the, um, the linear guide M3 bolts from behind in order to mount the bracket, as well as a center M4 bolt. And on the other type, we were using some M5 bolts. So if you're, you had the second version, which doesn't have the little hump in the middle, you can reuse the exact same M5 hardware um, that you take off of this dust shoe. And if you had the previous version, that's fine because we have the M5 hardware that comes in the bag with the magnetic dust shoe. Before I begin installation, the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the router around to the other side. On the previous design, the uh, vacuum hose came in from the left side, and on this new design, it's coming in on the right side. And this is so that it gives you more room to play around with um, on the left side of the machine and potentially attach a laser as well. Doing that is as easy as just loosening the router mount and pivoting the cable over to the other side. And you can also 
um, loosen the drag chain on the back side here and wrap the cable around the other way as well. You don't have to rewire anything. So obviously you can still reach the power switch and the speed adjustment, but this way you can have the dust shoe positioned on this side without interfering. The purpose of these three mounting holes is that if you have received a long mill version three, then the third version long mill has these holes in the gantry plate already and you can go ahead and attach them. If you've got the version two, uh, the one of the M5 holes from the previous design will line up with this bracket, um, but you will still need to drill the top one. And if you've got the version one, which was the Kickstarter one, um, then you won't have either of these holes. But this plate essentially acts as a template for positioning the holes that you need to mount your dust shoe. You can see that what it does is it actually fits over top of the linear rail here. And Basically, once that is being held in place, you can use your drill bit and actually uh, use the hole in the bracket in order to start a center um, on your steel plate. So you want to hold this plate in place and use it to pre-drill uh, top and bottom. switch over to a smaller drill bit like this guy here. If you are pushing the bit too hard and your bit breaks off in the steel then that's going to be really rough. So really take your time here. If you're not uh, experienced with drilling through uh, steel like this and err on the side of using a slightly larger bit um, even though it might take longer time because it's less likely to break but essentially what you do is you do the pilot hole with this bit here and then you switch back over to your larger size bit or you can do a pilot hole and then another intermediary bit and then back over to the large bit. But if you go straight for the large bit, you're gonna be standing here all day. And you might notice a burr on the back side of the plate here. So uh, you can grab a slightly larger size drill bit, or if you've got a deburring tool, you can use that as well. And just clear the, the burr on the back side. We'll grab our uh, four size Allen key, slip that through with the nut on the other side. Great, so there you have it. We've got our bracket attached now. You can take your magnetic dust shoe and attach it in place there. And as you can see, it's very rigidly mounted once it's attached on there, but you can still pull it off. I found the easiest way to grab it is to grab it from the underside here and you just pull it towards you and it detaches. As you can see, this now eliminates uh, any tinkering to have to do with uh, knob adjustment on both sides and trying to keep it aligned. Um, you can see that there's an opening in the back side here, and this allows for you to put the dust, dust shoe on and off without having to remove the tool that you have. Um, it, it's able to clear actually the, the collet and the nut on the Makita trim router. And um, you see you've got your nice viewing window from the front.